to another painting tutorial on how to paint Jane Czar. For this tutorial you will require a pot of Ethermatic Blue, Apothecary White, Talisar Blue, Skeleton Horde, Agaros Dunes, Fire Slayer Flesh, Blood Angels Red, Black Templar, Flesh Terrors Red, Basilicanum Grey, Warp Lightning. You will also require a pot of Wraithbone, Grey Seer, Retributor Armour, Liberator Gold, Iron Hand Steel, Ulthuan Grey, White Scar, Fire Dragon Bright, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Tyrant Skull. The first thing we're going to work on is the armour. And for this we're going to be using Skeleton Horde. Now I'm using a very small brush here because I don't want to use a lot of paint at once because with the Wraithbone primer on there already, we're kind of nearly there with what we want the the the, the colour of the armour to be. It's just a nice bleached bone, howling banshee themed armour. So I'm only going to use a little bit of the Skeleton Horde. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pick an area to start. And I think I'm going to start on her stomach. And I just want to concentrate my efforts in the recesses here, like so. And as I do this, I'm going to splodge on top of the uh, the, the flat armor panels. And, but the reason we concentrate on the on the recess is so that the majority of the paint that's on our brush comes off and then we use the tip of our brush to just paint a, a kind of really flat smooth cream surface over the armor panel so just kind of going again in this area just to neaten that up we'll do it once again around here so that's actually a little bit too much paint so just take a little bit of it off and we're going to once again just concentrate our effort in the recess and then using but the nothing but the tip of the brush we're just going to move this over the flat arm panel of Jane Zar's armor like this and this gives us as i said this nice smooth cream color so we just want to Continue like this, going around all of these armor panels like so. Just being very careful and moderate and considerate as we do it. And then we're going to move on to giving it some highlights. Once that skeleton horde is dry, we're going to use some Agaros Dunes. And for this, we just want to do only a little bit. We just want to attack some of the deepest recesses that we can see on the model just to add a little bit more shading. So we're not going to take very much on our brush and we're just going to find all those areas that are kind of the darkest parts of the model. So in this case, this kind of area just under here, we're going to add some Agaros dunes like so just to that recess just to make it a little bit darker like that. Similarly again we're just gonna on for example this leg armor panel here we just want to add a little bit of Agaros dunes to the underside of that armor panel like this. Just making it nice and defined along that edge. Once you're happy with those with that Agaros dunes and it's nice and dry we're going to go back to Wraithbone and we're going to be just applying a simple edge highlight of this on all of the kind of the sharpest details so places like around this armor ribbon here And with that, the armor is pretty much finished. So now we're going to move on to all the black details. And these are things like the ornate kind of extra greaves that she has scattered around the model. So there's one here on the arm. And although there is a kind of a, there is a gilt edge of gold, we're just going to be a little bit messy here. And we're just going to paint, paint the black Templar 
fairly indiscriminately over these details because we're going to layer up the gold afterwards. But we do want to be careful around all that bone armour that we've painted. So we're just going to keep, keep going around all of these details. Once that black Templar is dry, we're going to block in all of the gold details. And for this, we're using some thinned down Retributor Runner. So we just want to pick out everywhere that we want to be gold. And so the logical place to start is around all of this trim on these black armor panels and greaves in this chest plate that we've got here. Once that Retributor armor is, gonna, is dry, we're gonna give it a shade of Fire Slayer Flesh. And this is to just give it a nice, warm, shiny gold look. Much like you would if you used Reichland Flesh Shade, for example. Oh. And we want it to be kind of, not look like a dirty metal, which is why we're not gonna use something like uh, Basilicanum Gray or even Wildwood for that matter. So we just want to go over all of the gold with this colour. And as you can see, it's already nice and warm on that piece that I've just done. So just make your way around the model over all those gold details that you've painted. Once that fire slayer flesh is dry, we're going to highlight all of those gold details now with some thinned down Liberator gold. So we just want to, on the armor panels up here, for example, we just want to hit the edge with the Liberator Gold. Like so. And then on the big rune on her hat, we want to just Paint this gold all over that room to make it nice and bright. With all of that gold completed, we're now going to move on to the hair. And so for this, we're just going to be using Flesh Tear as red. And we're going to give it a good thick coat all over with the red. And we just want to start throwing it on with reckless abandon but obviously watch for any massive pools because you don't want it to like build up too much in one area and risk running over some of those other details that you might have already painted in. Um, so we just want to kind of use this flesh tear as red all over. Now when you look at the box art, you'll see there is a, a white streak on either side of her hair. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this in afterwards. So don't worry about kind of leaving a white streak um, to be colored in or kind of, you know, too much about the straight line. Um, because we're gonna use, we're gonna paint it in manually because we're gonna want to because it's, cause it's white and apothecary white doesn't work so well over wraith bone. Um, we just want to paint it in with some grey here. But for now, just paint this flesh tear as red all over the hair. Whilst we wait for that flesh tear as red to dry, we're going to give the long cloth and the kind of the crotch tabard a coat of warp lightning green. So we're just going to take some on our brush and we're going to start up here where it meets the blade, uh, half of the blade. And we're just going to start painting it on. Now it is quite pale, so we're going to give it two coats of this colour. What we want to do is just use big, broad brush strokes. Try and get as much of these cloth bits as possible with one stroke.
like so. With that warp lightning applied, we can now work on all the white details. And these are gonna be things like the mask and the strips that we see in the hair. And for this, we're gonna be using some thinned down gray sear. So we're just gonna take some from our palette onto our brush, and we're just gonna start painting it over these areas that we want to be white. So the reason we're doing gray sear on the mask is although the wraith bone is there already the wraith bone gives it like that creamy effect and we want this to be a kind of a colder a colder look than than we get from the wraith bone for the hair i suggest looking at the box art but you can see that there's kind of these two clear uh sort of lines that they've that they've chosen um for the model and one of them runs down this strength, the strand of hair like this one here. I'll just put some paint on it so you can see. One runs down here and then comes all the way up like this. Around there. The other disappears in between these fronds here. So it just kind of comes from this kind of area and moves down there like that and of course comes up around here so we're just going to go around and block these out a little bit further just to give this a, a nice wide streak in the hair and we're going to want to do two thin coats here to make that gray here nice and strong once that's dry, we're going to add some ethermatic blue to the mask. And the reason we're not using apothecary white is because you can see on the box that it's got this kind of this blue sheen to it. So we're going to use an ethermatic blue instead, but for the hair, we are going to use apothecary white. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some ethermatic blue. And we just want to be quite careful here, and we don't want too much. So that right there is too much paint. So we're just going to take a little bit of that off, and we're just going to very carefully paint this ethermatic blue all over the mask. Now it's going to look weird. It's going to look like we're just painting the mask blue, but what we're going to do is we're going to layer it up with another color just to brighten it back up. So the, the blue just stays within the mask itself, within the recesses, and we get a nice kind of smooth white finish over the top. So we're just gonna very carefully paint this ethermatic blue all over the mask. And next we're gonna add apothecary white to the hair. Let's just take some on the brush. I'm just gonna start liberally painting this over all those gray sear bits that we've already blocked in. Just to add some shade to these parts of the hair. Once both those colors dry, the ethermatic blue and the apothecary white, we're gonna highlight all of those white details with ulthu and gray. So for the mask, we're just gonna take some thinned down ulthu and gray from our palette, and we're just gonna paint over the entire panel of the mask, just leaving the ethermatic blue present in the recesses, like this. And we're just gonna, only in the deepest recesses as well, so. We just kind of want to get it all over these flat panels. Like so. To give us that quite a quite a nice looking effect. For the hair, we're just gonna pick out the, the, the tops of the strands. So where we see that the apothecary white is settled, we're just gonna avoid it. I'm just gonna paint this also in gray on the tops like this. And finally, to finish off these details, we're just gonna give it an edge highlight of white scar.
just picking out the most prominent details. On the mask. Like so. Now that those white parts are complete, we can finish off the rest of the hair. And for this, we're going to be applying some highlights of Evil Sun Scarlet. So I've got some thinned down on my palette just here. And I'm just going to start picking out these strands of the hair. So I'm going to start down here. I'm just going to be picking out all of these sharpest edges within the hair and running Evil Sun Scarlet along the edge. And this takes a bit of time, but it's worth it because it just makes all of those hair strands just pop out a little bit more. With that Evil Sun Scarlet highlight applied, the hair is now finished. So we're going to move on and we're going to do the silver details. And for this, we're going to be using Iron Hand Steel. Uh, because usually I would use Iron Hand, um, Iron Warriors as the base. But in this instance, the Eldari have such brilliance of shiny weapons. So we're just going to start straight away with the Iron Hand Steel. Now, because it's a layer paint and it's a lot thinner than the Iron, Iron Warriors, you might have to do two thin coats of this. But... Once that iron hand steel is dry, we're now going to shade the blade. And what we're going to do is something quite clever. We're going to use Basilicanum Glow as the all over shade. And then we're going to use Ethermatic Blue to give the impression of the energy dancing off the sort of parts of the blade to give it that kind of energized look. So what we do is we take the Basilicanum Glow with our brush. And we use a big brush stroke to just put a shade of this Basilicon and Grey all over the blade. So we just make contact with the model and pull it down like so. We might need to take a little bit more. We just want to even it out where we're missing any gaps like so. So now we've got this darkened shade on it. We wash our brush, we take the ethermatic blue, and then in this kind of area, we take a little bit more off it. In this area and in this area, we add the ethermatic blue. So we just take the blue and we paint it on like this. Similarly, again, we take some more ethematic blue and we add it with the ethematic blue and the basilicanum grey applied. As you can see, we've got this nice shining, shimmering blade. But what we're going to do is we're going to give it a quick highlight and we're just going to just return to iron hand steel for this. We're just going to run some iron hand steel along the edge of the blade, like so, just to really bring that cutting edge back out again. Similarly, along the hard edge of the flat of the blade, I'm just gonna relayer that up with the iron hand steel. With that done, we've now got a lovely shining vicious looking weapon and uh, nice and finished and all of the metallic details you can see on the silent death i believe it's called is also finished as well so the next thing we're going to move on to is all of the gems that you can see scattered around jane's are so there's three different types we've got the blue ones the red ones and the green ones the blue ones kind of are on her forehead uh, the green is for inside Silent Death, and the red is for the one on the chest and the ones just here on the, holding up the uh, tabard. So 
the application is the same for all of them. We just take the paint and we paint it over the gem that we want the colour to be. So for this one, I'm using Talisar Blue. Like that. For the green, we're using Warp Lightning Green. I'm just gonna put it in here. Like so. For the red, we're using Blood Angels Red. So similarly, once again, just painting the red over the top. Next up, we're going to highlight the red gems, and we're going to use Fire Dragon Bright for this. We don't want to do very much. We just want to take a little bit on our brush and just round the underside of the gem draw a line in like the bottom area, like so. Just add a bit of a shine to that gem. Because we've done it over the gold, it's already kind of, it's got a, a nice shiny quality to it. So we don't need to do too much. Similarly down here, we just wanna place a little bit of the Fire Dragon Bright. And lastly, on each of the gems in the top left of them, we want to give them a dot of Ulthuan Grey. And with that, the Phoenix Lord Jane Zar herself is finished, but we're not quite done yet. We're going to do the base. And so the first colour we're going to use is Basilicanum Grey. And this is for all the stonework, but not the kind of the runic seals that you can see in parts of the stone. Uh, so the Basilicanum Grey is for use on all of these parts, like, like the, the statue head here. And next up, we're gonna paint all that runic stuff with Agaros Dunes. So this is the parts that just here. And next up, we want to give a slightly different method of painting contrast um, coat of Skeleton Horde. So we're just going to take Skeleton Horde on our brush and then just in certain areas, we're just going to dab it on like so to add a bit of different shades. As you can see, I've added some stern and battle mire to the rest of the base because the last thing I want to do is give a dry brush to all of these details of Tyrant Skull and I didn't want to do it twice. Uh, but you could use any basing material to fit the theme of your army. But the last thing is to, as I said, using a dry brush to just lightly dry brush Tyrant Skull across all of the basing material and the rocks to tie it all together into one. And just like that, Jane Zar is now complete. Um, I think she looks pretty fantastic, if I do say so myself. Uh, I really enjoyed painting this one. Some, it's a really cool color scheme and um, I think it's really effective with very few steps and the contrast really does the work here for us. So um, I'm particularly pleased with 
her banshee mask. I think that looks fantastic. And the hair, of course, is another highlight for me. Also the green, just two coats of warp lightning and, and you're done. And well, you get this kind of effect. And this is really what contrast is all about. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, thank you all so much for your support and um, your continued support as well. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.